What's up guys? Today the plan is to continue working on the S10 uh, wiring harness. I got some stuff done off camera which I'll show you. I'm also going to do a bit of work on a buddy's LS valve cover. Uh, he wants me to weld this bung on here and he also wants me to take this bung, cut this um, cut this kind of barbed end off and weld this bung to this bung so that it's threaded so that he can put the AN line on there for his uh, catch can. So uh, we're gonna do that first and then we'll get to the wiring and try to get some stuff done today. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so I got this valve covered. Uh, it's from a six liter. I mean, they're all the same, but uh, uh, I cleaned this area here and uh, cleaned up this. And so now I'm just gonna weld this all the way around and then I'll start after I do that, then I'll have to cut that other fitting wherever I put it and join those two together too. So I'm gonna weld this and then I'll show you how that turns out. All right, so there you can see it's, uh, it's welded on now. That worked out pretty good. It was a little hard to get around the side here. So it doesn't look as nice as it does uh, around here because of this uh, knob right there. But uh, I think it turned out overall pretty good. Now I'm gonna cut up that other fitting over there. This one here. Pretty much just gonna cut this nub off and then weld this to this. All right, so this fitting, I just cut the that part off and then I had to drill it a little bit to make this so that it would fit in here nice. And then I'm just gonna weld that to that to pretty much turn this bar fitting into an AN fitting because this is the one that came with his catch can and uh, he didn't wanna have to order another one so I'm just gonna weld that up for him. All right, so there's that fitting all welded up now. Uh, made one into two, uh, two into one, I should say. That's actually going on a uh, old body style truck, like a, I think it's a 94, five extended cab with air ride and he's putting a six liter in it. Uh, once it's out, you'll see some video and pictures of it. I was working on my wiring harness the other day. I didn't do any filming. All I did is I took it off the truck. This is the act actually the original rubber grommet that uh, goes through that hole right there. Originally only had like two wires going through it. So I use a drill to drill it out and then a die grinder to open it up to the right size so I could fit all the wires. Plus, I mean, there's still tons of room to run more stuff through. And then I compacted all the grounds into two here instead of just one because there's quite a few ground wires. These are all the ground wires. So I put them into two and then I'm gonna put uh, eyelets on there to bolt it to the uh, block. Other than that, this is the stuff that has to go to the fuse box which I'm gonna put the harness back in the truck today. And then once it's back in the truck, I'll all bolt it in and connect it up to the engine. Then I'm gonna start figuring out uh, the fuse box is my plan. This is all the transmission wires here. Uh, and so I have all the plugs. This is the main plug from the 80, this thing, and then the uh, sensors, these two sensors. Because my wiring harness is from a 4L60 truck, it has this sensor speed sensor, but it doesn't have this one. So according to lt1swap.com, you gotta do a little repinning. So I gotta look that up first before I put it back in the truck and figure out where I have to add wires to and do that. So uh, I'm gonna look it up on there now and try to figure that out. Okay, so if you have a 4L60 uh, computer and you're putting a 4L80 in, now the plug is the same, but there's a couple wires that are pinned differently, but because this is a 4L80 plug, the pinning should be right. I'm, I mean, I'll double check that, but it should be right. And apparently the wires are all the same. So all you have to do according to this is um, there's two wires that you take out of here. You need to remove two wires and move one. So you remove two wires and you move one to a different pin. But like I said, mine's already, I don't have to take mine apart because it's from a 4L80. So then you have to find these wires, this white wire that you would have taken out, figure out which one that is. And then you gotta depin it from the harness. That shit doesn't wanna come out, of course. There it goes. You take this out of here. It's in the blue connector, pin 79. And then I wanna move it to the red connector pin 22. So I have to fish this through here, find pin 22, 
and just plug it into pin 22. So that's pinned. Then the next one is the tan black wire which is found at pin 42 and you move it to pin 23. So you do the exact same thing and then it's ready to go. So I'll do that now. Okay, so basically what you end up doing is you end up moving one wire from the blue and it goes, oh, where is it again? It goes into the red connector. Oh, here. It goes into the red connector right there in slot 22. And then this beige one, great, a tan one, you take it on the red connector from pin 42 over here and you put it into 23, which is right next to this one. And so that's all you have to do to the computer. Now this plug is like ready to go for the 4L80, but of course I still have to hook all these wires up. Now I'm gonna put the harness in the truck and get it all hooked back up, and then I'll start working on the rest of this stuff. Also, you can't just do this, like once, once you get the truck or car running, you still have to do some tuning with HP tuners. Uh, they, it's called a segment swap to switch it to accept 4L80E. So you have to do that too. So you can't just switch these wires and then expect it to work. There is tuning to be done also, just to let you know, but all right. All right, so it's uh, a couple days later, like usual, uh, we did a live stream and stuff. So then I stopped, uh, I stopped recording. So uh, I have the harness in, back in the truck now. Uh, it's all bolted in. Pretty much this is the whole engine harness. It's all tucked up here, comes through there, comes along here. That's your injectors, your coils, you know, your uh, crank sensor, cam sensors there, crank sensor is the only one that's kind of off by itself. I figured I'd show you guys with the intake off. You know, these are for the uh, idle air control valve and stuff. And then there you can see the adapter fitting for the uh, hot side, hot side, for the oil feed. And then also my oil gauge runs off of there. I'm also gonna run my O2 for the wideband through that hole, the wiring. I'm trying to keep as little holes as possible in the firewall. I also received yesterday, finally, my uh, header wrap, heat wrap. So I'm gonna wrap this exhaust pipe today. So I'm probably gonna do that now. And then once I do that, then uh, I can do, maybe start on the wiring for the fuse box and stuff. And once that's all done, then I gotta wire the transmission and the wiring harness will finally be done. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is pull this exhaust off and wrap that so I can get that done and then start on the wiring again. The way I did the other pipe is I just got started and just tightly wrap it around. I don't know, the other stuff was uh, smaller diameter, so I don't know how. It seems like I have it backwards. I got started here, as you can see, and it actually comes with a whole bunch of these stainless ties, but this exhaust is so big that I had to use, uh, I'll have to cut that off, that I had to use two of them, kind of like, just like a zip tie where you join two together. There we go. And then, once you do that, once you get that on, pretty much just wrap it. I'm sure most of you guys have done this before, but maybe you haven't. I don't know. Try to wrap it nice and tight. Some guys wet this stuff to make it wrap better. I don't know. I got two rolls of this, so if it's not enough, I got more. I already screwed it up. You gotta make sure you keep tension on it as you're tightening it so that it stays nice and tight. And of course, overlap it a little bit so that it's there's no uh, open spots. And theoretically, this should keep the head heat down. I know that the, uh, the turbo blankets, I have them on my car, and it makes a huge difference. If you put a heat gun on the turbo under the blanket, it's way, way hotter than on top. And I mean, I can actually touch the blanket after driving and you would never want to touch the turbo, that's for sure. Okay, I'll just forward to when this is done. Okay, so there it is. It's all wrapped. I actually had to use, I had two two inch by 15 feet, I think. And I actually had to use them both to get it all wrapped up, but it's wrapped, it's clamped. I think, and I, here's where the O2 sensor goes. 
I had to cut around that, but I got it all nice and tight so it's still covered. And then now I'm gonna put it back on the truck. There it is. All installed with the turbo blanket. Uh, there's the O2 sensor, which goes to over here. And then it'll get plugged in once I run the wires through. And then you can see it goes down there. There's nice clearance. I mean, it's tight here, but obviously they move together, but it's a little tight down there. I'm hoping it's gonna be okay. I'm thinking about putting some kind of limiting strap on the engine so that it doesn't t twist over as much when you rev it up or when you're accelerating, because it might hit the frame. It's hard to say, but there is clearance down there. It's tight, but what do you expect when it's three and a half inch exhaust uh, going through that uh, area there? I think now I'm gonna get back on that wiring and uh, continue getting this thing ready to run. This is actually the wiring harness that is for the engine, basically, that goes into the plug. So you have uh, your wiper motor, which obviously I need to keep. Uh, this is for coil, which I don't need to keep, if I can get rid of. These two go to the alternator. So I'm assuming I have to keep those. This purple one goes to the starter. And then um, this is the old alternator plug-in which I also don't need because the standalone has its own plug in. And then there's some wires here that are, I don't even know, they're all burnt up. I guess they're from other things, but I'm just gonna cut those off. I'm not 100% sure what they're for. They could be for stuff from the old engine that I just never cut them off. Basically everything's wired under the hood already, so none of those wires will be needed. So I'm gonna do that and clean this up first so that that can be finished. And then I can put the starter back in and then I'll get back to the wiring harness under the dash. All right, so I got those wires. This one is for the wipers. It's gonna have to, once the inner fender's on, that'll kind of hold it down there. But that's for the wipers. And then this one here, which is gonna have to tuck under there. Um, the one wire goes here and goes down to the starter and the other two go here and to the alternator. The only thing that I just realized is that uh, I must be missing a wire because there's got to be a wire that goes from the alternator to the starter to energize the alternator and also the stuff inside the truck. So I guess it must have been a separate wire. So I have to look for a wire to run from the alternator to the starter and then pretty much all that stuff will be done and uh, then I can get on that fuse block. So I figured it out that there was a wire missing obviously so I ran it from here. I ran it through the harness. It comes out here and then it goes along and down to the starter. So I got that done. That's gonna be it for this video. Next time I'll get on that fuse box, finish that up. Obviously I got distracted doing other things today, but uh, next time I will definitely do that. So uh, like always, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, we'll check you later.